little as $5 you can get up to 10 printed secret boards for your special projects. You just need to partner with the right company. PCB Way helps you bring those ideas into reality by giving you the chance to manufacture your secret boards in a professional manner for a very affordable price and pretty quickly. Go and check them out. They offer many services. They collaborate with the open source community and your first order is almost for free. We built the drone yesterday, everything complete. We soldered, all the pieces are put together. Now we need to configure it. So we go to Betaflight and let's see what we have to do. Now we see there is nothing. This is a complete new drone. So we need to do all the configurations. Let's start with the port tab. Here we need to do two different things. One is to configure the receiver in the right port and the second one is to configure the VTX in the right port. So during the building of the drone I said that the receiver was in port 3 so I need to have in the UR3 the serial RX on and I said that the air unit was located in port 1 so UR1 has to be with MSP activated. Um, the second one, the UR2 doesn't need to be anything and the rest could be the same way it is. Let's save and reboot. In the configuration tab, we have to do a few things. Remember that I set my FC uh, on the other way, right? Like I have the power cable to the front where the camera is, which means that the flight controller is 180 degrees rotated and I need to let Betafly know that otherwise it's not going to fly correctly. So here I choose 180 and that will make my drone move in the right direction. We can confirm that if we see, uh, if we take the, if we take the drone now and I move it compared to the screen and I see that it's moving correctly with the diagram on the screen. Let's see, if, is there anything else to do here? Well, yeah, of course, we're gonna name this. Uh, this is the Nord 5 Winter. I don't have a magnetometer. I think I have a biometer, so I'm gonna leave it there for a while. And I don't have a beeper, so I'm going to set my, my beeper from the motors. So I have something. Very important part is knowing that the motors are located in the right place and that we have uh, the props the way that we want to have them. So here we're gonna work in a few minutes. The way that I normally like to test my drones is using my external power supply which I can set to have specific values for the voltage and the uh, current. So I, if there is a short circuit, I can hold it and I can be prepared with the power supply to stop anything that's happening. We can see that the power supply is giving, is not reaching the one ampere, which means that there is no short circuit in this case and now i can start testing my motors with just paying attention that the air unit doesn't overheat i normally have a fan directed to the air unit or the vista or whatever i have there if it's the walk snail because they get very hot when you're working on the bench but right now i'm not gonna do it because i don't uh, it will make a lot of noise and then this recording will be bad so i'm gonna be a little bit careful with how long i have things on while I'm doing all this so I can still record and at the same time show you guys what I'm doing. Betafly 4.3 4 is pretty easy to use to uh, change the motors and configure the motors. It has this wizard you can use. Uh, just make sure you don't have the props and then you start the wizard. The motors are gonna start spinning and you're gonna click on the motor that is actually spinning that lets Betafly know which motor is where. Then you save it and Betafly is gonna know now how to position your motors to comply with the image that we have here on the screen. 
Now it's just about checking that the direction of the motor is right. Again, we turn it on, we start this wizard, and we're gonna see now all the motors spinning at the same time, and you have to verify that each one of them is spinning right. If they are not, then you can click on the individual number that you have on the screen, one, two, three, four, to change the direction until you are satisfied. Okay, let's build the firmware for the Express LRS receiver. Try to um, burn it using the USB pass-through and see if that works. In this case, I have a GEPRC Express LRS and then I'm gonna use better flight pass through. Here, even if I'm in the EU, I'm going to use this one because otherwise I just get 25 milliwatts of power on the transmitter. And then my, my binding phrase, and we try to build this. It's gonna take some time. It's uh, download and compile and everything at the moment. So let's see what's happening. Now we turn on the radio we turn on the, the drone and you see that we are bound we are bound to my drone without having to do anything else than just uh, install that passphrase that I mentioned before. And if I open Betafly now, now I go to the receiver tab and I'm going to see movement if I move this. The next thing to do is to actually see that my uh, sticks move the drone the way that it should move. I already know that my channel map is um, in this order, so I can do it, I can change it directly and just verify if I move the throttle is here and if I move yaw is here and if I move pitch is here and so on. Perfect. Next to do the modes. I'm going to have my arm, of course. Um, I normally have angle and horizon, even if I don't use them ever, but I have them. Beeper, and I have a pre-arm. Those are the ones that I normally use. So is aux1, and go like to have it here in aux2 horizon 2 the beeper i have it in aux3 and the pre-arm i normally have it in aux5 uh, we need to move this one here and the beeper all the way here so it beeps yeah and the aux 5 there. Save. So we have uh, configured the receiver, we have configured the motors, the direction and the mapping of the motors, and we have configured the modes, so I have all my sticks and my switches on the right place. Last thing that we need to check is the OSD and PID. I'm not very picky with my OSD, but I like to have a battery. And I think we said this one had altitude, so maybe I just throw it in here to see if we actually have it. So in the past I have already worked on the P-Tuning for a 6S drone on this frame, which means that I can just copy paste the values that I have. And now I have my PIDs. I leave it in the screen for a few seconds so you guys can copy if you want. And now we are actually done. That's the configuration that you need to do on the drone. Nothing very complicated, just a few things. 
and now it's just time to go and fly. Thank you for watching. See you soon.